Alex Teal. I developed UARM Creator Studio. Today, we're going to be going over how to teach the software a new object to recognize it and use it, how to calibrate your robot so you can use advanced vision functions, and we're going to go over every vision command and talk about what it does and how you can apply it with your projects. So, the first step, if you haven't already done it, is to plug in your camera and your robot. To do that, click on Devices. It's on the toolbar. Next, click Scan for Cam uh, sorry, Scan for Robots. Now you might notice that there's multiple COM ports. There's no way to know which robot is yours, so you'll have to try this twice if you have multiple. Now, make sure you have the latest firmware for the robot uploaded to the robot. Next, click Scan for Cameras. If multiple cameras show up, you might be selecting your webcam. Again, there's no way to know which camera is which until you try it. Click on it and press Apply. Now, you'll want to wait about 10 seconds, but keep an eye on the toolbar for devices. Two green check marks should appear next to the robot and the camera. If they have, then you can proceed. That means that both your robot and your camera are successfully connected. And you'll notice that a stream of video from your webcam has appeared here. Your next step is to set up the environment with which your robot will be moving. The most important part of this process is to make some sort of mount for your camera and a mount for your robot. Now, your robot and your camera should not be moving relative to each other, okay? The reason for that is, once you do the calibration, the vision calibration, if, the, if you put an object in the camera's view, the robot will know where the camera is and where the object is and know how to move to that location. But if your camera has been moved, then that information is no longer valid and you will have to rerun the calibration. Even small movements can cause issues in tracking. So, make a mount for your camera. The camera has to be above the robot, facing down. It doesn't have to be perfectly above, just in the workspace where you're going to be working in. And you want the robot to be immobile. So what I did is I grabbed a lampshade, I took out the bulb, and I put a webcam facing down on the lampshade so I can adjust it. Then I took a whiteboard and I put a robot on it and I made little clay mounts for the back legs so the robot won't move. As for choosing a good camera, your best bet is a 640x480p camera without autofocus and without auto contrast. And remember to have good lighting in your area. That means even lighting, white, and objects details can be seen clearly with, with the camera. Once you've set up your environment, it's time to do some tracking. So, let's create an object. Vision objects are created under the Resources menu or by clicking on New Resource. Click on New Resource now, and then click Vision Object. So, this tutorial will walk you through the process of creating a new vision object. What this means is you're going to be able to track this object and use it in your program later. The next step is to choose your object. I've chosen an Arduino box. The reason I chose this is because there's a lot of detail on the front face of the box. This will make it easier to track. Now, put your object in the camera view aligned with the horizontal or vertical. If it's a circle, don't worry about it. Make sure the object is on the ground. Don't put it on top of anything. The reason for this is because there's Z estimates. The height estimate of the object is done relying on the idea that the object was placed on the ground when it was recorded originally. Now select one corner of the object all the way to the other and try to encapsulate the entire object with this square. And now you're tracking in real time. You'll notice that the tracking is fast and accurate. Press next or press enter. And now tell it the height of the object. I will say about one centimeter. And this is the most important part. If you want to be picking up this object later, you're going to want to select the area of the object that is both smooth and able to be picked up by the robot's suction cup. So I will select a bounding box here which pick up commands will aim for when picking up the object. Now, if you're not going to use this object for pickups, just select any area and press next. Your next step is to use the object in a program. Now, 
In this tutorial, you should already know how events and commands work. So I'm going to skip explaining that part. Now press Add Event, and there you'll notice that on the bottom right, there is Recognized and Not Recognized Event. This means that if the object is recognized, that the event will trigger and code will run. We want code to run when the box is inside of the camera's view. So press Recognize and then click on the object that you just created. Once you've done that, for simple testing purposes, we'll have the robot's buzzer ring once the, the Arduino box is in the camera's view. So click on the basic tab and click on the bell icon and drag it into the command box. Press apply and press run. So we can see that the event is running when the Arduino box is in the camera's view. Now, what if you wanted to test where the object is in the camera's view? Well, I'll show you how to do that. Click Add Event and click Step. So this means that we're going to check constantly if the object is in a certain position. So click on the Vision tab under the Commands and drag in the eye icon with the cross on it. Drag it in. Now you'll notice there's a, a video stream of the object. Effectively, this is an if statement that will test if the Arduino box is within certain bounds of the camera. So let's say we want something to happen if the Arduino box enters this part of the screen. So make sure you select the object, Arduino box, select which part of the object has to enter the bounds in order for it to trigger, and press apply. Now, the next tutorial is on logic, so I won't explain this too much. But these two brackets hold code that only runs if this test is true. So we'll put the buzzer command in between these two brackets. Now press start. You'll notice that nothing happens. This is because the Arduino box is not within those bounds. You can see that it's working just fine. Now you'll notice that there's a lot of different vision commands here. However, if you try to use some of them, for example, for example, pick up box, and you ran them, errors would pop up. This is because you haven't done the camera robot position calibration yet. That's the next step. This calibration is important because it tells your camera and your robot their relative positions. That way, if the camera sees an object, the robot will know where that object is in its own coordinate space. So, click calibrate and click Calibrate Camera Robot Position. Now this tutorial is very in-depth, so I'll be skipping through a little bit. Now click Next. Make sure your camera is over your robot and the robot is in the center of the camera's view. Now put the suction cup of the robot on the ground. Press Next and confirm that it is in fact on the ground. This is the, next, this is the important part. So for picking up objects, you need to have some sort of marker on top of the robot's camera view. So this could be anything. For example, I took a note card, I folded it, and then I drew all over it with Sharpie. Okay? So you'll want to place this note card on the robot head, like so and tape it onto the servo. The most important part of this is that there is a lot of detail on that marker. Now line up the marker with the horizontal axis or the vertical axis and select it with your mouse. Now you want to select a broader box so that the center of the box is on the center of the end effector of the robot. Try moving your robot around to make sure that the tracking is good. Let's press next. Now this is the final step. This will be an automatic calibration, so just press start calibration. Make sure you've successfully completed the calibration before continuing. So, now to the next step. Press add event, click on keyboard, press letters, and then A. We're going to put commands inside of this command list, and we only want them to happen once we press A. This is just for testing purposes. The first command I'm going to show you is the pickup object command. That's this one right here. Click it, drag it, and drop it. Now, this command is simple in the sense that it only takes one argument, 
and that is which object. Now press Arduino box or whatever object you ended up making. Click apply. And now when you press A while the program is running, it will attempt to find the Arduino box and pick it up. So start the program. Now nothing happens until we press A. Put the object somewhere that it can be seen by the camera. And then press A. There you go. It successfully picked up an object. The next command I'm going to go over is move relative to object command. Delete the pick up object command and replace it with this, uh, this command right here. Now, this command will find an object and move to a position relative to that object. So, for example, if I put Arduino box and I set x, y, and z to these values, then the robot will find the Arduino box and move 5 centimeters above it. Okay? If I put 5 for x, 0 for y, and 5 for z, then the robot would be 5 centimeters to the right on the robot's x-axis from the object. If I put 5, 5, 5, for example, the robot would be 5 centimeters to the right and 5 centimeters forward. So this is essentially a way to move around an object. If you want to move on top of an object, just put 0, 0, and 0. Now, Z can sometimes be buggy. So if you're having trouble with that, just leave it blank and it will only set the X and Y position of the robot, leaving it at whatever Z position it was at last. Now, we're going to try that. Press Apply, press Start. And when I start it, when I press A, it should move on top of the object at its current height. And there you go. The final command I'm going to show you today is the set wrist relative to object command. This one is a little bit difficult to explain. So first, clear your command list, drag it in, and select the object. What this does is it sets the robot's wrist servo to align with the object's current angle on the camera's view. So one use of this would be to align the wrist with the object before you pick it up. So for example, if you set wrist relative to the object and you say relative to the robot's base, that's important, and then you, after that you pick up the object, you'll notice that the object is always aligned with the robot suction cup. It's not like this, it's not like this, it'll end up being aligned. So your object could be at any orientation, and when it's finally picked up, it'll be aligned with the robot's suction cup. There are plenty of uses for this command, and what I recommend is that you, you check out the user manual, and you look at the documentation for this command in order to understand it a little bit better. The final vision function that I'll be going over is detecting motion. So if you click add event and you click motion detected, you can activate events when the camera detects motion. So you can choose how much motion. So click any motion and press run. Now you'll notice that you haven't done the calibration required for this, so it's not letting you do this. Click cancel, and then click calibrate. Click calibrate motion detection. What this will do is it will see how much motion there is using your camera when nothing is moving, and then how much motion there is when the robot is moving back and forth. So you can hear the robot moving right now for me. It'll do this a couple times, get an average, and then finish. Once it's finished, you'll see some numbers pop up right here. Press apply to save the changes. So now we want to test it. So click on the basic tab and then drag in the buzzer command. So if the camera sees motion, the robot's buzzer should activate. Press start and then wave your hands in front of the camera. And there you have it. You can activate the events based on motion. So that's the end of the vision tutorial. Now remember, there's more vision commands to check out, and you haven't even scratched the surface until you start programming in Python using these vision commands. So what I recommend is you click on any command and click on user manual. 
and you can read through the contents of every command and learn how to use them. So thank you for watching, and I hope that this software is of some use to you. It's completely open source, so be sure to check out our GitHub and contribute if you want to. Good luck on your projects!